Welcome to Our Jewish Roots. Faith unshakable, faith unstoppable, faith of our fathers. Yesterday, there was a man who was at the end of his day, much as right now we're at the end of our series, Faith of Our Fathers. If you haven't seen it all, go back and check it out. It's worthy of having a look at because we looked at principal moments in American history and discussed them. We looked at principal moments in biblical history and noted how they correlate. It's not only good for history, it's good for your story and my story as well. When you look at the story of early America, the schools, Harvard, there was a premium placed on learning Hebrew. They were interested in that. Not only were they interested in it philosophically, they wanted to get a, a world view of the biblical world. Uh, they were interested in the Hebrew roots of the Hebrew Bible. And, uh, you know, Hebrew was put to the top of the list of what to study, interestingly, in this new Christian world. I was reminded of a scripture from the book of Leviticus when I visited the state house recently and read the inscription upon the bell. Proclaim liberty, it said, throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. Yes, may that bell ever ring. Both the Old and the New Testament have proclaimed liberty for countless generations. I remember reading from the Bible daily as a child. These men have said it well, Betsy. Patrick Henry, the Bible is worth more than all other books which have ever been printed. And Thomas Jefferson, I have always said and always will say that the studious perusal of the sacred volume will make us better citizens. Well, we've seen over the, the past several episodes something of the faith of, of individual founding fathers. So I thought a good way to end is just look at the faith of all these guys. Um, you take these 56 signers of the deck right here. Among them, 29 of them graduated and had degrees from schools that were started to train ministers. They went through the same minister training. Not all became ministers like the Reverend Witherspoon here. Several of them did. A lot of them were involved in Christian ministry, but even Reverend Witherspoon, he has more than a dozen volumes of gospel sermons. Now, this is from 1768. This is one of his many volumes. Um, this is the first family Bible ever done in America. This was done in 1791. That is the real deal. That's the real deal. That's now, your original. museum, you house, this is, these aren't replicas, no, this these, is the real these stuff. these are all genuine, actual originals. And so this, this is the Bible that Reverend Witherspoon helped do for New Jersey uh, in 1791. As you move over to someone like this man, Francis Hopkinson, George Washington made him a federal judge, but he was also a church music director and a choir leader. And this is a work that he did in 1767. This is the first purely American hymn book. And it's the first book in America to have musical notation with the Psalms. Now, what he did was he took the Psalms of David and set them all to music. So 150 Psalms set to music, which to me is fairly amazing when I think of Psalm 119, the longest song in the Bible. The musical notation here for Psalm 119 is 32 pages long. And this is a judge. This is a world, federal judge. They say we've separated church and state. I guess he never got the memo. Uh, he, yeah, the founders didn't get that memo. 